got some applique and some features on, I'm sewing on my M7 Continental. And I whipped up this pillow um, really quick. It's a super easy technique and I like easy when it comes to applique. I'm not big into tons and tons of applique, but when I'm doing it, I like it to be pretty straightforward. So um, here's my M7. Um, that's what I'm sewing on today. And I wanted to show you a few features on it that makes applique even easier. So first we're gonna come on in and zoom in. Oh, I've got a glare from my window. Here we go. So the first function I wanna talk to you about is my pivot function. And that's where your needle is down and your uh, pressure foot comes up when you stop sewing. And this lets you move your fabric around really easily. So, um, I use this function almost entirely. If a machine doesn't have it when I'm looking for a new machine, that is definitely like my number one has to have that pivot foot function. Um, so with applique, it allows you while you're sewing around your applique, I have this, oh, I'm really close up. Come back out. The pinching is not working. Okay, um, I did this cloud applique. Uh, and with the pivot function, it lets me kind of stop in here and move my fabric and then continue on. So it's super helpful in when you're doing applique. So this cloud, um, I made this morning. It's just a simple, I drew out a cloud and the way that I do my applique is I take a shape that I want to make and I cut it out in the fabric I want it. And then I also cut it out in fusible interfacing. So I have on my pillow, I use petals and the petals are all from, um, I made a whole bunch of memory quilts and it was from that. So I have a petal that I cut out and then I cut it out in a fusible interfacing. And the reason why I do use this method for memory quilts is because often you're getting tons of different fabrics that don't really, shouldn't be in quilts or not typically are in quilts and it lets me um, make sure that I am getting, um, I'm using a method that's gonna allow my fabrics to stand up over time. So with this method, you put the right sides together. So I have the, um, the adhesive side, that's what I'm talking about, down and on like facing the printed side. And you're going to sew around the whole thing, all the way around. So this is where the pivot function comes in handy. So let's go in closer. And I'm just using a straight stitch. And I like to start in the middle. Let me zoom so you can see that. Oh, my camera holder today is very movable. So I'm gonna sew around and see every time I stop, the needle's down, the presser foot is up, and then I'm gonna go to the end. Someone crank the speed up, and then I can continue on to the next part. Stop, I like to readjust, and needle's down, presser up, foot up. So all the way around. And then do the other side. Okay. And then you've made your entire um, shape. You've sewn it together. And the next part is you simply pinch and you make sure you have your good fabric out of the way and you are just cut a hole. It doesn't really matter how big it is. And then I also, if you have corners and stuff, give them, trim away the seam allowances. And so also, um, I know fusible interfacing is a little bit hard to find right now. Um, people have been using it for different PPE. You could also use this method with um, just a normal other fabric on the other side and then use like a spray adhesive or just pin it down. So now I'm going to flip it. And I have my trusty chopstick. Anyone else use a chopstick for all your turning? Um, I know I've been lending out supplies to people making PPE and I've lent out a few chopsticks because people, some people don't have them and they really are such useful tools. So there we go. I've turned it 
and now I have my petal shape. And what I can do is just take a backing fabric and then place it where I want it and iron it down. I'm not gonna iron it on the live because I am klutzy and I'm sure I will burn myself. So I have one that's already done. And that's as simple as it is. It's just, I don't know, I call it the flip and stick. It's pretty straightforward. And then um, you applique around the outside. Which brings me to my next part. So I like, um, yes, Liz, chopsticks. They're cheap and they're easy and they do a good job. Um, the next thing on my machine that I love that a lot of our, um, like our Skylines and Up and a few others like our SOAS 740 um, has a start and stop button right here. And it gives you the ability to go slow on this machine. I'm not sure if every machine has it. You'll have to check your own. Um, but this is really cool. Now, at first, um, you have to unplug your foot, your, what's that called? The, the go foot, the pedal. <laughs> um, you have to unplug it. But you get to start and stop all your sewing with just a button. And I'd never done this until a couple of weeks ago because I was, like, afraid of it. It seems... How could I control it? But it's super easy um, to do. And there's this, there's a fun part to this one um, is when you use it and I press start. So it just starts and it goes however, and you press stop and it stops. It goes however fast that you have your speed setting on. Um, yes, Liz, foot control. Thank you. Words are hard some days. So with this one and on certain machines, you can press the start button and if you continue to hold it, it goes super slow until you release and then it goes fast. And then when you press it to stop again, it goes super slow again. And when you release it, then it stops. So this function really lets you help you get into the like when you're getting into this point where you can slow down and really determine where you're going to turn. Oh, I'm sorry, you have a black screen. Maybe try leaving Instagram and come back in and maybe that will help sort out that issue. I'm sorry, but it will be recorded in our stories for 24 hours and then on our YouTube channel, which is Janome Live, okay? Um, then, so that I really like. You should play around with your machine and try this out. It's really cool. My one friend, she's hilarious. Um, after a long day, she likes to sew, but she's done standing or sitting. And so she has this table that goes over her bed and she puts her sewing machine on and she does all her sewing with the start stop button in bed. Why not? I am all for it. Okay. Another awesome feature. Hello, Zazarella. Um, with this machine is when we go over to our t-shirt button, our applications menu. And go into this really nice, oh, I'm sorry, there's so much glare. This heart one. Um, we have all these different um, menus. We're going to go into applique. And there are six different uh, stitches here to choose from. But I really, I'm a, I don't know. I just really like the blanket stitch. So that's what I'm going to use today. And there's a really cool feature on the M7 and some other machines have something similar and it's where when you're doing a corner, you can restart your stitch so that you get a really nice corner. And what I mean by that is, okay, I have this, let's kind of see there. See that corner just, where's my pointers? How neat that looks. There's a lot of space. So I press the... There's a button, can you see it right here? At my corner, I press that button and it restarts my stitch. So it doesn't give me another line. There should have been another line coming into the middle there. It instead starts my stitch again and gives me a few stitches. So I did one, I marked it over here without doing that and see how I have that crossover. So you have to, you, well, to get a really nice corner, you have to restart your stitch in the corner. And I must say, it's really cool when you can do it and make it, um, it looks super professional. Cause like if you were hand stitching, you would probably do something similar right there. 
Okay, so to do that, let's, we can try it right on the piece that we have going here. So what I'm talking about is I'm going to start sewing with my start stop button and I'm going to start sewing and then I'm going to stop. Okay, now here's the kind of tricky part is I started, I stopped where the fabric, where the thing was going into the middle and this makes it kind of hard when you stop that way so I'm going to start again and try to get it to stitch out one more stitch. So now I am stopping in like one of the little, I call it a valley, not a peak, in a valley. And then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click on this button and it's going to tell my machine to restart the stitch. And then when I come back down here and press start again, oh wait, that was bad. I didn't turn. Bad lives. Okay, we'll get this. There we go. I'm going to press the button again. I'm going to turn this time. And then we're going to stitch more. And then I'm going to show you what it looks like. Just like that. See that nice neat corner? So you have to practice a little to get that just right. Because I learned that if I turn it when it's in a peak, um, it also doesn't turn out so well. But if you hit it right at a stitch after or two after that you're going to get a really nice turn. Um, so before I show you a little bit more of my finished product, I just wanted to ask you all, um, we were just talking the other day as a team about the timing on these Instagram lives. Are you liking the time that this is happening for you? Or do you have a suggestion of a better time? So if you could just leave us a little comment, um, we will definitely take that into consideration uh, moving forward. We just want to make sure we're getting most of you at a really good time. Okay, so now let's actually try it on one of my corners. So I have one of the pieces, the appliques that I've flipped and I've stuck it down to my fabric and I just ironed it on. And now when I start, let me see if I can get you in closer. Okay, when I start, I like to put my needle in right where I want it. And so I'm on, where's my other pointer? Okay, so I'm in just on this side of the fabric and then I've landmarked on my uh, foot where I need to line my fabric up as I stitch. So this is something you can play around with. I like it to be on just on the right side of the triangle. Some people will like it on the tip of the triangle. Um, yeah, so it's it's it just really depends on how you like it. Oh good, so you guys are thinking that it's, the time is good. Well, that is good to know. We wanna make sure that you guys are all getting the most um, out of this. Okay, so let's attempt a corner. Now these corners aren't as crisp as um, some other appliques, but we'll see what we can do. So we're gonna start it with our button. And we're gonna go, and it's going, I have it cranked. So. I'm going to go into the corner and then stop. I'm going to hit my corner turn button that I showed you before. And then we're going to go again. And then because this is just a sample, I will cut it. Oh, got to stop it first. Cut it for you. And then you can see that I got a nice clean corner there. Now, if my corner had been popped out a little bit more, it would look even more right on point. But um, with the flip in stick method, the corners aren't as crisp, crisp as if you had a raw edge applique. And while you guys, um, I have everyone paying attention right now, I wanna remind you that if you're looking for anything to do with a Janome machine, you want to upgrade, you need something else, you want a new accessory, that many of our dealers um, are open and willing to help you out. We are still drop shipping a ton of machines out, so you have options. Um, just contact your local dealer or go to, if you don't know who they are, go to janome.ca and we have a list of dealers and you can contact them and you can get everything because we're still working behind the scenes like things aren't open everywhere but we're we're doing our best and um 
we will definitely have more lives and we will be um, posting a schedule, I think, as what Liz has been saying. And so that you guys can come join us. And then we also have tons of resources on our blog, genomilife.wordpress.com. And there's so much stuff there. Like if you're like, I need a new project, there's so much there. You're going to find something cool to do. And we also have a ton of videos going up on our YouTube live. All of these lives end up on our YouTube channel, Genomi Life. Um, if there's not any questions or anything about today's applique, I really like, it's fun when you get into it. And I really like this method because I sometimes struggle with shapes. So I can print off a page on the printer, um, like of any shape I want. Like if I wanted a flower, I can print out that shape and I can just add some seam allowances. I add like a quarter inch seam allowance, cut that out and make it into an applique. Oh, this Friday is on the HP foot and plate which is really cool. You should definitely tune in to see that. If your machine doesn't have that, you'll want to see that because it's, it really steps everything up a notch. Anyway, thanks for joining in. Um, I hope you all have a great day. Oh, you want to see the pillow again? All right, let's flip the pillow around or flip my camera around. So that's the pillow. And all I've done is I had all these petals left over and I just iron them on where I wanted them. And I, I can't just have them all the same. I had to do an accent and I stitched them down and they're good to go. The corner button on the Janome. Oh yeah. Check out JanomeWordPress.com. I know there's options on that. I think there's a restart stitch button on some machines. So check those out. Um, yeah. So this pillow really, because I already had the petals made from another project took me I don't even think 30 minutes to put it all together. Like it's quick and easy. It's a fun thing. I made a, a whole cloud quilt once. Okay. It's on the 12,000. Yep. Yep. Perfect. All right. The so it, okay. So there is one on the so so applications menu. All right. Perfect. Well, I hope I've inspired you guys to try something new with the applique and made it a little bit easier. Everyone have a great day and stay safe and take care. Bye.